<laughs> having a problem getting comfortable right now. Um, let me just, does the lighting look better over there? Let me know in the comments. Um, or does it look better? I look more centered here, don't I? I guess, kind of. It's very hard to uh, do this with my limited setup, but I try to do my best. That looks better, doesn't it? Okay. So anyway, <laughs> now that we've gotten through all of that, um, today we are going to be reviewing Rambo First Blood Part 2. Uh, so in this one, he is, it starts out with him in prison. Uh, so, and then obviously Troutman comes back to release him and put him on this top secret mission, which Troutman ends up finding out was just a cover up basically, uh, was just basically made to look, or er, the, the camp was the camp that they were going to was supposed to be empty, but uh, Rambo ends up finding uh, prisoners of war there, or a prisoner of war there, uh, which obviously was against what the mission was, or what was supposed to happen in the mission. My hair's doing some sort of funky thing, isn't it? Anyhow, um, it went against what was supposed to happen in the mission, so. The other guy that was there, Murdoch, played by Charles Napier, and Podovsky, who is the Russian dude that ends up coming into the film later on, um, played by Stephen Burkhoff, and Co. was the, um, I, I guess you would call her like an informant. Um, she was the one that uh, Rambo met down on the ground to help him, I guess, f find the camp, and obviously, eventually she ends up being the one that helps him get the prisoner of war out of there, but she ends up re-infiltrating the camp after Rambo gets captured, because Murdoch says to abort the mission, because having found anybody there was obviously not part of the mission, that wasn't supposed to happen, so they leave Rambo there with the prisoner of war. He gets taken back to the camp and is interrogated and tortured. And eventually he radios the camp and says that he is coming after Murdoch himself. And then that's when he escapes a second time and is able to come back at, uh, to the camp again with the helicopter. So a lot actually happens between that. Um, point. Unfortunately, um, the girl Ko that he is with ends up dying uh, thanks to some Vietnamese troops that happened to ambush them at one point in the movie. Um, there's this huge scene on the boat where Rambo blows it up, and uh, the action in this was much better than the first one, I would say. Now that he's. Uh, I guess fighting for the, in some way, fighting for the army again, I suppose. But anyhow, yeah, there was lots more action in this movie. And then obviously the helicopter chase scene where he lands the helicopter and pretends like he's dead or passed out or whatever. And the guy goes to shoot the missile and he like just at the last second flicks up the rocket launcher and just blows the helicopter to the air. <laughs> like, it, some of it was a little bit over like, oh my god, how did... How did he time that? But the action was really good in this movie. Some of it was a little uh, comical, but hey, it, <clears throat> this I mean, this movie was made in 1985, so they didn't have quite the uh, same sort of special effects, like I said in the first for the first one, like they do now. But uh, this, these action films are just still incredible because it almost looks more real um, because they had such a limit on what they could do in those times compared to now. You know what I mean? Like, as far as special effects go, it, I don't know, it just had a certain feel to it when it comes to these kinds of movies because it just, it feels more real and looks more real. Just due to the fact that limit, li very limited CGI or special effects that they could even have back then, obviously, due to the fact that computers were far more limited in that, in that time, in that time period, in that decade. Ah, uh, but anyhow, getting off getting off track a little bit here. 
what are we at? Five minutes. Um, so anyhow, he is able to steal the helicopter, blow up the other helicopter that's chasing him. Um, so he doesn't have to just deal with uh, the Vietnamese soldiers. He also has to deal with the Russian soldiers and obviously the American soldiers who um, everybody besides uh, obviously Troutman doesn't want him back there. And then at the end of the film, he is able to make it back with all of the prisoners of war. And he does go after, <clears throat> um, God damn. He does go after Murdoch at the very end of the movie and says to him, you know where the rest of the prisoners of war are. You go find them type deal. Um, and then obviously Troutman tries to offer him a deal to come back and fight for them because he says, you can't keep running forever. But I guess, I guess they're kind of using, um, it's almost like they're using Rambo as their ultimate weapon. And somehow he ends up being stuck in the middle of the war between all of them. So yeah, the Russians are working with the Vietnamese and obviously the Americans must have been allies with Russia, I suppose. Or maybe they were allies with... It's so confusing how war works, hey? Just all the underhanded deals that go on to fund war when we really don't need to be fighting for anything at any given time. Like, uh, it's just the power, the power that some people have just to create issues in the world for everybody is just absolutely insane. But anyhow, that's, that's a very different video. But anyhow, it does kind of show it in here, in this movie, I guess, so I can, can touch on it a little bit. But yeah, uh, it just kind of shows that the more the more power you have, um, the more you're able to do, and the more you're able to sweep under the rug, and the less you have to show the public, which was clearly shown by um, Murdoch in this movie. And obviously the Russian guy, because I'm assuming at this point in time, um, America and Russia were supposed to be allies. So, sorry, there's a whole bunch of stuff just going off at the back, flashing on my Netflix, and it just catches my eye from time to time as to stuff that I could review in the future. So, there you go. If anybody ever wonders what I'm looking at when they comment it down below and timestamp it sometimes, which I find kind of funny as I because I tend to look up at the screen behind me, um, that's that's literally all I can actually show you guys. It's just just my Netflix flicking through there. <laughs> now you guys have seen more of the room. You're welcome. <clears throat> um, I think that's about all I can probably touch on without going too too deep into the story. Now, I didn't really feel like there was any sort of love connection between um, Rambo and Co. Although it almost seemed like she knew him be from before for some reason. But I don't really know if there was any backstory to that connection or not. Kind of odd. But it, it almost made it when she first when he first landed and finds her it almost seems like she knew him from before. So maybe he did. But then she says, you weren't expecting a woman, were you? So it's mildly confusing there. But anyhow, obviously there was a mutual respect there, um, soldier-wise, because I'm not sure whether she was a soldier or whether she was like a, like a double agent or what kind of role she actually played there besides, I guess, the person he was supposed to meet on the ground. I believe, anyway, that was where she was, or the, why she was there. I might have missed that a little bit. But I believe he was supposed to meet somebody on the ground. So I'm going to say that was what that was. But I could be wrong. Don't quote me on that 100%. Anyhow, I would give this movie a 9 out of 10. Um, can't quite give it a 10 out of 10 just because it was supposed to be an action movie and some of the action scenes made me laugh. And I know it's not supposed to be comical. It's supposed to be more serious. So I guess that kind of takes away from the movie a little bit as as far as action movies go. But other than that, fantastic film. Obviously, Sylvester Stallone is one of the great action stars. And he's still going. 
like he still has projects upcoming so <laughs> he he isn't stopping anytime soon and the dude's 74 so that just goes to show you that uh obviously he really uh loves doing what he's doing so whether he makes some movies that go bad or good he doesn't care he's just out here loving what he does so kudos to that um 10 out of 10 on this movie again um so <laughs> uh like share subscribe and comment down below i think i actually got it in the right order that time because sometimes i mess up the order of that so there you go um and comment down below your thoughts on this film if you've seen it if not definitely go watch the rambo series and just Sylvester Stallone movies in general because they're just great no matter what I'm sure you, anybody can get something out of these movies unless you're not an action movie fan but hey I mean who doesn't like an action movie from time to time <clears throat> just to kick back and have an adrenaline thrill ride it just I don't know to me that's what these bring so anyhow I will see you guys in the next one bye bye for now